I... Susan is moving out, my friend. She's moving on. She's moving on. Hey, she told me the other day. Susan has bought a house. She's leaving us in these flats. Susan, first it was. You know, Susan was confused, ne? Then she got a man. Then she got a car. She's single now, but she's bought herself a house. Man or no man, Susan is moving up. Tasa, Susan. Hmm. Go, girl. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey, beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kapana Shimangi, and this is how I do things. It's a show where you send me your questions, and I'll let you know how I would do things. And I can take it as advice or use it as entertainment. Use it, don't use it, take it, don't take it at all. Do what you will with it. Listen. I'm no professional. I'm no professional whatsoever. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Honeys, you have expressed that you love the setup. So you know what? I thought let's just bring this queen's setup back on Sundays for cozy conversations. So we'll grab our cup of teas or a cup of coffees and we'll have a conversation between the two of us. You know, speaking about tea, I'm having Earl Grey and this is a Maxwell Williams cup. Yep. And ooh, Earl Grey with almond milk. I love Earl Grey. There are many questions that I receive about purpose that, you know, I don't know if I'm in the right place. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I don't know if things are going to work out for me. I receive a lot of questions about fear that I'm scared. I, I have this idea that I want to go for and I don't really know if it's going to work out. I'm scared of failing. I'm scared of what people are going to say to me. And then there are other questions that I receive about our self-esteem and our self-image seeing ourselves as people who are capable seeing ourselves as enough seeing ourselves as forgiven we go through so many things in life and we get into a relationship with someone and being open and vulnerable with with another person is so scary because we've judged ourselves that how can i forgive myself for the things that i've done i was addicted to porn and i got over porn but i still feel so guilty and so ashamed you know, I'm, I feel guilty about how many sexual partners I've had. Um, I feel guilty about how I used to be and how I used to behave. Self-forgiveness becomes so difficult. And all of these things affect how we see ourselves. So this week, I read this line that has just stuck with me so much. And I'm going to paraphrase because I can't really remember it. And it said that who we are or who we try to build ourselves to be is based on who we think other people want us to be so we think to ourselves that my mom wants me to be like this therefore i will be more responsible and i'll be more active we think that our friends have an expectation for us to be the life of the party so we arrive to places and then we are big and bold even though we actually just feel like being quiet we have a perception of other people's perceptions of us and we base our lives and who we are and how we act around people based on that perception no one actually really comes to us and says, this is what I expect of you, or this is who I think you are. This is what we think other people think of us. And we act based on that. And I was just like, what? Yeah, he's deep that one. Then a little later, I then started to think about, so who am I then? How do I define myself? And I read this other line that says, we are not who we say we are. We are who God says we are. And I was just like, so what does God say I am? We need to take a break from how we define ourselves because our definition of ourselves is very limited. We limit ourselves based on the experiences that we have. We limit ourselves based on, I grew up in this township and in this township, people don't, you know, go on to be famous. People don't go on to be CEOs. People don't go to finish matric. People don't go on to finish varsity. And we have this limited perception on our, of ourselves based on our life experiences, what we've seen and what we've been exposed to. Because we haven't been exposed to people who live a certain type of life, we just don't think that life is possible for us. However, God, the all-seeing, all-knowing God, He has a, an identity that He's given us. He has this idea of who we are. He has identified and defined us what is that definition because it is so much greater than any definition we can have of ourselves then the third line that i heard of was one that was said by eleanor roosevelt and she said that 
no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And I've received so many, so many questions and so many things from people who suffer from peer pressure, and many of us do, that everybody's doing this and I feel like I should do it as well. That I think people expect me to be like this. And we allow people to put us down. Whether it is judgment on our bodies, judgment on who we are, or judgment on how we feel, those things bring us down. When somebody judges the way that we, we look, when somebody judges our stretch marks, when somebody says, hide yourself because that is unacceptable. We are brought down by those things. But to hear and to know that for someone to bring me down, I have to give them permission. I have to let those words enter and sink into me. The fact that that person said those words is actually on them, it's not on me. But if I absorb that, then it's on me. So how do I then identify myself? How do I then have a good self-image of myself? How do, how do I then gain confidence in myself when all of these things are just circling in our heads, the experiences that we have, when we have our parents who don't understand the dreams that we want and they put us down, when we have our friends who are just like, you wanna do what? Ah, uh, you'll never make it. How do we then create a good self-image of ourselves? How do we define ourselves outside of the circumstances that we are raised, outside of the fact that maybe we aren't exposed to amazing things? How do we have a good, amazing definition of ourselves when all of this exists? This is what I think, and I'm learning constantly. What if we took a break and just said, ah, let's take a break, ah, stop the noise, cut it out. Let's take a break from defining ourselves and let's challenge ourselves to believe in and to study and to and to fully believe it, trust it. Trust what God says about us. Trust the definition of what God says to us. Instead of creating our own affirmations, let's take the affirmations that God gave us. Repeat those affirmations to ourselves and let's just see what happens to us. Let's just see. So I have a list of 17 plus affirmations that we receive from the Bible. And I want to challenge you that for a week, wake up every day and repeat these affirmations once in the morning once in the afternoon and once in the evening and just see how you feel by the end of the week here are my favorite top eight affirmations from the bible number one i am a new creation the question is do people change can a person change once a fifth always a fifth once a failure, always a failure. Once a cheating, lying scumbag, always a cheating, lying scumbag. I don't believe in that. I do believe that people change. The Bible says that you become a new creation. I've known Jesus all my life, but the relationship I have with him now, that changed at one point in my life. And when that relationship changed and became deeper, I became a whole new person. Ask the people in my life, I have changed. I have changed a lot. I am a new creation. I truly believe it. And I thank God every single day that he yanked me from the pits and was just like, come, let me show you who you really are. The Bible says, but Christ calls us new creations. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5.17. What? What? Drops mic. Boom, baby. We are a new creation. You can take a lying, cheating scumbag of a man with one woman. He goes in, into a relationship with another woman and he's the best father. He is, he is, you know, loyal and he's amazing. That man has changed. He can even change with you. And I know that many of you may be like, no, he's going to continue to cheat on me. I believe in Jesus and I believe in a new creation and I believe it is possible. There's no reason to stay with a person who does not deserve you but it is a reason to believe that people do change. Even you can change. Once you build that relationship and you become new in Christ, you can change. Number two, I am forgiven. When many of us decide to turn away from the things that we used to do, the bad habits that we had, it kind of sticks with us and we feel guilty. We still carry that guilt from our past lives. But the Bible says that we are forgiven. I am forgiven. For all of the things that I have done before, for everybody that I had hurt, for all the wrong that I did to myself, the wrong that I did to God, the wrong that I did to my family, all the lies, all the deceit, all the addictions, everything, I am forgiven. The Bible says, 
I am writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. 1 John 2 12. How crazy is that? I remember when I got into a relationship with V and we really became vulnerable about where we were and where we were from. And there were so many things that I had to confront myself about and I told him about those things and he had so much grace that he forgave me almost immediately. But it took months because I had to, it was the first time that I had gathered all of the things that I was ashamed of and spoke about them all at once. Over a two hour period of time, just, you know, expressing these things that I had done and I'd confronted, I'd come face to face with this person. I was just like, who is this child? Who is this child? And the more I prayed and the more I read the Bible, I just I decided I'm just gonna seek God. I'm gonna seek Christ. The more I read that, you know what? God says that I am forgiven. I truly am forgiven. Through Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. So if, if Jesus has forgiven me, if God has forgiven me, why have I not forgiven myself? So whatever you are carrying, and I know I received multiple questions about this, about self-forgiveness, and not you know continuing to punish yourself for the things that you used to do. You are forgiven. Let it go and set that free. Number three, I am whole. I am short of nothing. I am complete through Christ. I cannot even add to this. I am whole. It's such a filling. It's such a filling thing to say. The Bible says, So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Colossians 2.10 I am whole. Number four, he is always with me. Some of the most loneliest times you will ever experience in your life is a time of change. When you used to be this person and you had a crowd of friends that you could always do those bad habits with. When you decide to turn away from those bad habits, it is a lonely, 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 lonely road. You feel alone because your friends won't understand because they're used to having you be with them with these bad habits. So when you gain these new habits, people will, will not understand you. And for you to honestly stick to those things, you kind of withdraw from those friends because you're just like, if I'm going to turn away from those habits, then I need to turn away from the environments that force me into those bad habits. And many times it's almost like this full circle thing where you had these bad habits and you did them with these friends. And then you step away from those friends, and you step away from those bad habits. Once you become set in your new good habits, some of those friends may come back and realize that my, my friend has changed for the good. So, and, and remember, it's not a thing of, and I remember having this conversation with Mbumi, it's not, a, it's not a us against them type of thing. But the truth is that you will feel that way, but that's not how it is. You are not alone. There are so many people that you can fellowship with. There are so many people that can support you. But even if you can't find those people, you are not alone because God is always with you. He is always with me. The Bible says, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 9 loving you are not alone ever. So repeat the positive affirmation that he is always with me. When you start a new journey, when you quit your job and you start to become an entrepreneur, it's a very lonely journey. It feels like you're doing it all alone and you're not alone. God is always with you. Find comfort in that. I am never truly ever alone. God, every single time, even when you're alone in the toilet taking a poop, He is there with you. He can smell everything. Number five, I am peace filled. If there's anything in life that can honestly upset you and take you off is worry, fear, and anxiety. Oh, those things are a lot. But you know, there's joy, peace, and rest with God. There really is. The more you immerse yourself, in the Bible, the more you have conversations with him, you know the moment when that anxiety starts to hit in your heart and you're just like, just start to speak to Jesus, just speak through the Holy Spirit, just speak and just be like, you know what, Lord, I just feel, I can feel the anxiety coming in. I pray that you give me guidance to release me from this anxiety. And the guidance sometimes may be guidance to say, go speak to someone, 
The guidance sometimes may say, let go of the thing that gives you anxiety. The guidance may say, seek a therapist. The guidance may say so many things, but you seek that guidance from God and you release that anxiety, that fear, and that, that, that worry about the thing that you have. The Bible says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. Another part of the Bible says, the Lord says in Isaiah 43, 1, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. In verse 43, 4, it says, Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, God loves us so much and he doesn't want us to have that anxiety or that fear or just be unsettled by things. The Bible also tells us that he provides for us in Matthew. God always is with us. He provides for us. There's nothing that we will ever, he will never leave us wanting. Everything that we need, he has given to us or he will give us. He will provide. If you do not have it, it is because God says you do not need it right now. All you need is me. Be filled with God the Father, the Holy Spirit be filled with you, be filled in the room that you are in. Don't ever have anxiety about what will happen, what will I have, will I have everything I need, you will. God promises and assures, assures us of those things. So I am peace filled. Ask for that guidance. When you have that anxiety, don't deny it. Bring it and take it to God. Read the Bible, remind yourself that God is there for you release yourself of that anxiety trust in him ask for his guidance so that you may find peace six i am created with purpose i have a purpose don't ever feel useless don't ever feel like you have no purpose don't ever feel like how namusola in life because you do you know every single person has been created with a purpose that needs to be filled there's a question in this world that only you can answer because God has created you to answer that purpose. And you have that greatness in you. God lives in you. That greatness that God has given in you. That through Christ you are going to fill that thing. So that thing that you have the desire for, it is your purpose that is speaking to you loudly and sometimes softly telling you, get up. There's this thing that God has given you and he keeps bothering you all the time. You have been moving and shaken by the Holy Spirit saying, get up, go, go, go. There's a question that is left unanswered. If you do not seek your purpose, if you do not seek Christ and say, Lord, what is it? And wake up every morning and just go after it. There's a question you are leaving unanswered. There's a person who is suffering right now because you have not answered the question that they need answered. You are an answer to a question. You have a purpose that God has created you for. The Bible says, perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. Esther 4.14. Just read the book of Esther as well. This is the mo you have cre you have been created for such a moment as this. You are alive at this time for a reason. You have those questions in your mind going on for a reason. You were created the way you were for a reason. If you're missing a finger, there's a reason. There's a purpose to your being right now. If you do not know what it is and you do not understand it, then seek the one who created it, created you to answer it. Number seven, I am strong. There are many situations in life that we get to that we feel as though, oh my word, I'm not sure if I can do this. I'm not sure, you know, I don't know if I've got the talent to do this. I don't know if I've got the willpower to do this. I don't know if I've got the capacity to do this. Like, surely, can I? The imposter syndrome that sinks in, that sinks in. huh? When that thing comes along, you just go to the Bible and you say, I am strong. Oh yes, I can. God arms me with strength. And he makes my way perfect. Psalm 18, 32. You know God makes your path straight. When you believe in him and you hand over your days to him and you give over your purpose to him, he makes your path straight. It don't even be confusing about what it is that I should do, where I should go. You wake up every day and you don't know what you should do for the day. You wake up and you hand over your purpose to him and you're just like, Lord, please guide me. I hand over my day to you. I surrender my day to you. I surrender my talents to you. I pray that I can hear you as you guide me. And then your path straight promise you and this just leads me to my favorite number eight i have direction the bible says whether you turn to the right or to the left your ears will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it isaiah 30 21 hey purpose 
direction, fear. These three things are some of the most asked questions I receive. What am I supposed to do? Is this the thing for me? What direction am I supposed to take? I am unsure about this direction. I don't think I am capable. I have fear. Fear is stopping me. But God gives you direction. Pray to hear him. Pray to hear him. He will make your path straight and even show you the direction. He'll be the voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. If we humble ourselves before Christ, if we humble ourselves before God, and we surrender our purpose, surrender our day, surrender our ways to Him, He will show us that the little that we think we are, you know, the, the fact that we think that we are broken, that we are unforgiven, that we are worthless, that is not who God says we are. That is not. We are precious to Him. We are made with meaning to Him. You are magnificent. The little that we think we are, that we are worthless, we are not worthy, that uh, we, we are incapable. That is not who God says we are. God says we are so much more than that. He says that we are victorious. He gave his only son for us. He says that we are worth that. Oh. There's so much more that we need to learn about ourselves, but we cannot ask ourselves, we cannot lean on our own understanding, we have to go to the one who understands, whose understanding far, far surpasses our own, and understand what he says we are. There's so much more to live and discover by really looking towards Christ and saying, God, who am I? Because he says I am victorious, he says I am worth it, he says I am a new creation. Oh. He says I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Hey. So that is the challenge. 17 affirmations of who God says we are. I challenge you to do it for a week. Just repeat it. 17 affirmations in the morning and 17 affirmations at night. Just repeat them. I am a new creation. I am worth it. He is with me. Oh, I love it. Let me know how it goes for you guys. That's it. That's all I have for you today for our cozy conversations. My tea has gone cold again, but I hope that you have enjoyed whatever it is that is in your cup. Until next time, beautiful people. I'm Kapana Shmang and this is how I do things. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Oh, this video fills me with so much joy. If you really want to read those full affirmations, head over to my website. The link is in the description below. And let me know how it goes for you. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please click on this button right here to subscribe and feel free to binge watch. Head over to my website, www.kopanishmagi.com to get those affirmations and to join the gorgeous gang. Until next time, mm -hmm. bye.